Dear students, I am Dr. Jalja Nair again here to continue with my lecture on North of Rise, the function of criticism at the present time. In the last lecture, I had discussed about what was Rise's views on criticism and what is the state of criticism during that he had uh, studied during his period. Today, we'll discuss about the role of critic, his views on the critic and what is the role of critic. Fry says that the role of critic is very important because criticism mediates between the artist and the public. He had made a distinction between two types of critic. First one is the critical reader, one who faces the public. And the second one is the critic proper or the author as he had called, one who is involved with the literary work. Try considers that the critic should try to identify the category of literature before examining it on the basis of aspects such as the author's life, historical context, etc. It is the responsibility of the critic to systematize the previously unorganized study of literature. As a shaper of intellectual tradition, critic must organize the material within a critical framework that follows the natural contours of literature. His ideal critic describes and coordinates and progress towards the taste based on knowledge and understanding rather than personal likes and dislikes. So here he is focusing mainly on the objectivity of the critic. And we also find that his views are very much similar to that of Matthew Arnold's views on critic. Fry says that in exact Arnoldian tone that art is a continuously emancipating factor in society. Critic whose job is to get as many people in contact with the best that has been thought and said. He is ideally the pioneer of education and shaper of critical tradition. A critic has to identify the different levels of meaning in the literary text so as to define and classify them. Thus, he has stressed on the factor that critic is only responsible for the popularity of the work of great writers. And if we find, if we have, as we have studied Matthew Arnold also, he said that criticism is a disinterested endeavor to create, to create an atmosphere where the best ideas they prevail. In the same way, here also, Northrop Fry stresses on the fact that the critic, need, critic needs, critic is the person who can provide an atmosphere where great works can be created by the literary writers. Fry then goes on to discuss how to think of criticism as a science. It does not mean we study literature quantitatively. He feels that every time we read a text, we might be witnessing some larger process to which the text belongs. Connecting a text to a larger process is thinking scientifically or specifically. Calling literature a science, he says science helps us to close it off literature. We need literary text in order to do literary study. He defends the systematic criticism because we study Shakespeare. We also seek knowledge of the forms in which Shakespeare writes. He says that criticism plays an important role in literature. It is due to criticism that Shakespeare and Keats have gained enduring and sustaining popularity. Fry says that it is high time for criticism to start defining a conceptual framework within which scientific method can be used. Fry also says that he is more interested in scientific, systematic, or progressive criticism as a way to guard the integrity of discipline from external invasions. 
although fry agrees that literary criticism is not an exact science but unlike it is progressive and they choose different but complementary critical paths in his desire for criticism as a science fry contends that one learns criticism and not nature just as one learns physics and not nature i quote literature cannot be taught the criticism of it is the only thing that can be caught taught directly he thinks that criticism has its own conceptual universe that the critic creates and dwells in so he again stresses on the fact that criticism is a discipline which ha- which helps a layman also to understand literature any work of or analyze any work of literature he try proposes a genuine literary criticism which draws its method from the body of literature itself literary criticism ought to be a systematic study of works of literature in order to have a systematic study the body of literature must already possess a systematic nature he claims that systematic study of literature progresses lit- progressed very little after aristotle one of the main problem that criticism faces at the present time is that it is not organized so as to understand the factors to be taken into account for critical judgment fry concludes his essay by saying that author shows his insight on the state of literature in relation to criticism of literature he states that literature is and will be a pile of creative efforts as long as there is a lack of organization established by criticism it need to develop a theory of literature which we will see which will see this effort with verbal universe the concept of culture as stated by matthew arnold was precisely an integration and consolidation of literature and verbal universe by using criticism as a means of connection the process of this consolidation is the main function of criticism at the present time and as we conclude the article on the function of criticism i we i can say that literary criticism has its own sphere of knowledge and it has it should not be subordinated to any school of thought this is what northrop fry stressed in his article then he also said that it ought to be a systematic study of works of literature he stressed on this fact that there should be a systematic study of all the works of literature then the other main aspect or the fact that he had developed, he had dealt with in his article is criticism is like a science that studies the features that the works of literature have in common so thus i come to the end of the lecture and i thank you all for listening to my lecture thank you